the Israeli Hamas deadly imbroglio and sexual harassment of female students. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. The brazen attack by Palestinian militant group Hamas on Israel that began on Saturday will be seen as a turning point in the Palestinian-Israeli conflict with far-reaching repercussions, analysts say. The multi-pronged attack saw as many as 1,000 assailants infiltrate Israeli territory, kill hundreds of soldiers and civilians, and take dozens of hostages back into Gaza. It was like nothing Israel had seen since the 1948 Arab-Israeli war. Israel pledged revenge with Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowing mighty vengeance, quote-unquote. Hamas said it was prepared for all scenarios. Joining me to discuss this is Collins Nweke, Global Affairs Analyst. Hello, Collins. Yes, sir. Well, uh, it's uh, fantastic to um, be with you again after more than 18 years. Oh, yes. The last interview, the, the last live interview we did was in London, England, when you guested on a live show. What an irony. You, you, you don't need to fly. You literally flew from Brussels to London to be interviewed. Now you are virtually, virtually putting into the live studio in Lagos. Good to see you, good. It's but, a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for, for the invitation, and uh, I'm so uh, glad to be with you. Collins, the situation in Israel, indeed, specifically in the Gaza Strip, is very, very disturbing. No human being could have seen what took place on Saturday in Israel and feel com comfortable. And yet no reasonable human being to, can afford to see the degree of devastation that has been inflicted now on the Gaza Strip and be comfortable. What is your opening remark on this unfortunate, deadly imbroglio? unfolding now in Israel? My immediate reflex, uh, Bola, is uh, the fact that um, nothing that has happened uh, so far, uh, well, not really so far, in the first few days after the Hamas um, horrific attack would surprise anybody. Uh, because um, Israel, just like any country on the surface of the earth, has the right to defend itself. However, um, like the analogy goes uh, in cases of uh, torture, there is this uh, thought about the involvement of uh, somebody closely linked to my kids, one of my two kids, or two of my uh, kids, are being held somewhere, and then uh, they nabbed the um, kidnapper, and then the interrogators then relied on me to give them a clue as to how they should treat the um, you know kidnapper. Now, in cases of torture, you don't do that because the person involved is actually uh, not in the right state of uh, mind to make an objective assessment in terms of uh, how to best uh, treat the uh, kidnapper. So that is left for the rest of the world. Now, in the case of Israel and Hamas, now Hamas, sorry, the rest of the world are the ones that are supposed to um, 
you know, have the straight head to be able to uh, calm things down rather than taking a specific side and actually booing Israel, gingering them up to, um, you know, go. He's crossing the line into genocide, as some people have um, actually described it, but at least uh, there are indications of uh, violations of uh, international law. Now, it looks like the Western nations are actually in competition on who will condemn Hamas the most and actually encourage um, Israel to uh, unleash as much mayhem as possible, forgetting that there are civilian uh, casualties in the mayhem that has been unleashed, um, you know, on uh, on Hamas in uh, in the Gaza Strip. So, my immediate thought is that the world has got to take a few steps backwards. Now, I have no blame at all uh, for Israel for reacting in the manner that they are doing, because I mean, if you were in their shoes. You will really feel that uh, their need to respond in a very well coordinated and brutal but, but Collins, manner. Co Collins, uh, Israel, justifiably so, should respond to a brazen act of terror that was inflicted on innocent civilians. But having uh, said that, but having said that. Israel ought to realize that it is a nation state and that it is a signatory to some international conventions on human rights and that the all of the Gaza Strip is not literally made up of a mass. So the idea of telling a whole population, about 1.3 million people, to literally vacate the territory where you have kept them in an open prison for more than 16 years may seem to some people like is a, an act of state terrorism, quote unquote. How do you respond to that? Well, that's exactly the point I was trying to make, but uh, illustrating it, um, you know, with uh, the example of uh, the involvement of an emotionally laden person who is, uh, you know, whose kid, um, you know, was um, uh, kidnapped. So, yes, um, you have um, actually restated my thoughts in, um, you know, a clearer uh, manner. And you see, okay, on you. the other slide, like I said earlier, um, Israel could hardly be blamed for responding in the manner that they did. But the rest of the world, having stood by Israel up initial, should now begin to relativate and begin to see things from a perspective that Israel is not in a position to see right now by calling for de-escalation, by calling for restraint, by calling for people to begin to now be, think of how to come back to the negotiating table and the subject of that negotiation, let us not forget where all of this started from, is a two-state solution where Israel okay, and okay, Collins, Collins. Palestine are living you know, side by side uh, each other. Collins, uh, a very good place to come in now to interject. If the Israeli government, especially the administrations that have been led by Benjamin Netanyahu, if those administrations up until the, the incumbent one he led until the day before yesterday, before the government of national unity with which they are prosecuting this uh, ongoing uh, furore, if those administrations have been serious about the two-state solution, we probably wouldn't have seen the madness that we are seeing now. It was the snob, the utter snob of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, his flirtation with ultra-rightist Israeli 
partisans and the conceit that is the administration, the last administration he added until day before yesterday, before the government of national unity came into being, it was the conceit that they held that they had the, the Palestinians under, under control of arms and that they could go around perfecting the, uh, the Abraham Accord, which was launched by Trump. They had signed agreement with Morocco. They have signed agreement, you know, diplomatic relations with Sudan. They have signed United Arab Emirates. They have signed with Bahrain. They are even up until about a week ago. Israeli Minister of Tourism visited Saudi Arabia. They thought they had the Arab world under, the, under their, in their hands and they could snub a functional and mutually beneficial solution with the Palestinians. Look where we are now. How would you respond to that? Well, how I respond to that, uh, Bola, is that um, with all of these um, you know, examples that you have uh, given, and that is uh, quite, uh, quite a bit of examples, you have that will find it difficult to uh, justify uh, his actions in terms of those who want to believe that uh, Israel has never uh, been serious about the uh, two-state uh, solution and that Israel is actually serious to wiping Palestinian out of the surface of the earth. Now, on the other hand, People also say that Hamas has exactly the same ambition, that they do not want to recognize um, the right of um, existence of, uh, of Israel. But you see, the point is that an eye for an eye actually will leave everybody blind. And that is exactly what we see uh, play out here. Because uh, uh, tell let, me. Let, let me. Let me quickly point this out, uh, Collins. Um, in so much as... Uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has ruled Israel, or has been the Prime Minister of Israel for 12 out of the last 14 years. There are pronounced opinions too, and indeed some partisans in Israel who believe organically, operationally in the two-state solution. But it does seem that Benjamin Netanyahu, although he had openly professed his belief in the two-state solution. He, however, has acted inconsistently with the professed position of being inclined to a two-state solution. So even within, Israel, even within Israel, there are people who support or are against. And also on the Palestinian side, you have FATA that constitutes the the Palestinian administration that seems to support the two-state solution but technically has been snubbed by ben Benjamin Netanyahu. Hamas, like you've rightly said, does not even believe in the existence of the state of Israel and yet Hamas at one point got Benjamin Netanyahu to negotiate for the remains of a captured Israeli soldier. Look at how the scenario now has gone gaga. What would be your closing remark on the mess that is presently unfolding now and how the world could help to arrest this madness degenerating to either genocide or something that would be very unfortunate? I want to uh, believe that we are drawing closer to uh, the point when the um, key act United States and the uh, transatlantic Atlantic, uh, partners, uh, so-called the, uh, the Western uh, nations, that they will realize that obliterating uh, Hamas and uh, actually um, unleashing untold mayhem on uh, Palestinians as a whole 
will simply not solve the problem in the wrong law. Yes, it might provide a bit of uh, succor both to the government and um, you know uh, some segment of uh, the Israeli uh, government. But um, ultimately, what that will result in is a virtual circle, a virtual circle of another group springing up when Hamas is no longer there. So sustainable solution means going back to the drawing board. And I was happy to hear the African Union make some very, very poignant um, you know, uh, remarks in that uh, uh, regards in terms of um, actually uh, encouraging uh, you know, people to de-escalate. Uh, following up on that, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa of uh, South Africa has actually volunteered to be a uh, mediator drawing from his um, experience, you know, in the apartheid, apartheid, post apartheid um, era. So these are opportunities that the world should not let to slip through its fingers to now begin to calm Israel down, having showed good faith to them in the first instance by supporting them because they're right. Uh, of increasing Israel's capacity to defend itself to uh, preventing genocide from happening from respect of uh, human rights. That's where the priority should be, and they should help to curb the humanitarian crisis that is already building in uh, Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Israel now seems to be between the rock and the Red Sea. And why am I using that rich metaphor? Because as it is now, apart from the situation of Hamas that Israel has to manage in the Gaza Strip, Hezbollah is also throwing some, some bombs in the northern part of Israel. We really don't, the world is suspicious that Iran may, through Hezbollah, be orchestrating some mischief as Syria is, uh, as it is, alleging that Israel, the Israeli Air Force has bombed some of its, uh, some of its airports in Aleppo and another part of, uh, of Syria, I'm wondering, can Israel, notwithstanding its seeming omnipotence or historical, historical um, uh, omnipotence in that neighborhood, can Israel afford to fight on two, three or more fronts at the same time? Um, ordinarily, the straightforward answer to that is no. But you see, Israel is uh, actually being empowered, being given strength by its uh, Western uh, allies. I mean, remember that um, uh, the United States of America uh, has as uh, a foreign policy trust the support for Israel come what may. And so the combined force or forces of United States, Israel, and uh, some other Western countries, as a matter of fact, Germany has joined the fray, and um, you know, a few other countries, uh, France, and so on and so forth. So their combined uh, force will actually exert um, untold uh, political uh, pressure on uh, the rest of the world, uh, I mean, on the other side. So Israel alone, uh, that would be difficult, but Israel is not standing alone here. And so uh, uh, and that uh, leverage uh, and uh, the rest of the world, they need, to, they need to grab it with both hands and use it to uh, the benefit uh, of uh, and mankind. That, and that takes me to the geopolitical, the geopolitical um, situation of the world that the war itself is now playing up to. Uh, as it is, uh, Russia, uh, Iran have seemingly supported the murderous acts of Hamas. Uh, we, like rightly stated, the United States of America have not only sent a warship to that neighborhood, uh, as we speak, the American Secretary of State, who is like the foreign secretary, who is like the foreign minister of America, 
is literally now hopping from, from one capital to the other in that neighborhood. So uh, we are thought that the situation in Russia and Ukraine is bad enough and may trigger a global uh, a calamitous military situation. But it's looking more like uh, this Israeli Hamas uh, imbroglio may, may be a bad icing or a sour icing on a bad cake. What's your take of that? My take is that um, indeed, um, if the rest of the world um, decide not to take um, a deep breath and um, you know a stew uh, overt or covert support for either of the two sides. Um, the calamitous uh, situation that uh, you um, now Russia, of course, um, we know that uh, Russia, you know, is um, uh, very much bent on um, reinventing itself. Uh, you know, following the um, uh, the war in uh, Ukraine and the way that they have uh, divided the, the world and them actually losing uh, support, um, you know, uh, by the day uh, from the rest of the world, they are looking for as much relevance as uh, they can. And of course, this gives them the opportunity, you know, to actually um, gain or attempt to gain, you know, some uh, some relevance. Um, now, the point is, if, you, if I have a second, the point is that nobody... No reasonable country in this world should be in the business of supporting either Hamas or supporting uh, Israel. Yes, Israel has a right to defend itself against the uh, atrocious, you know, attack by uh, Hamas. But we should, the world should dig deeper to the root cause and begin to deal with it uh, rather uh, than just scratching the surface. Collins, uh, I must ask you this, uh, particularly because you live in, in uh, Brussels, you are a local politician in Brussels, and I know by the virtue of your antecedents and how you function, you relate with some of these diplomats from other parts of Europe who, uh, who function in Brussels. It does seem that our bait are leaders of countries like United Kingdom, like France, like Germany, have openly expressed support for Israel, but it does seem that there is an undergrowth, undergrowth of resentment in Europe by some politicians. We have seen, we have seen pictures or pictorials from the EU assembly and from some parliaments where European politicians are lambasting the the unhinged support of their governments for Israel. What is your take? Uh, what is your reading of how Europe is taking this? Well, um, in politics, of course, you have the official position, uh, just like uh, in diplomacy as well. You have the official position, which you have to defend, convert me as the representative of the country, uh, as the diplomat. But you also have your, you know, personal uh, views that you express, uh, you know, privately. Now, my friends uh, and associates within the uh, diplomatic corps, they are obliged, of course, to respect the foreign policy of their country because that is their job. That is what they are meant to, um, you know, to do privately. Of course, um, they are human beings, and they have, um, you know, some different thoughts. Now, coming closer, and I will leave it at just one example. Um, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, a former um, uh, leader of the Labour Party, Party, who almost became uh, the Prime Minister, is on record as of a few hours ago, lambasting uh, Israel, not necessarily supporting uh, Hamas for what uh, they did, uh, they're saying that 
they they have to call a halt at this uh, at this moment. Uh, so I think uh, those are very reasonable uh, positions. And as we speak, I have received numerous invitations to attend all sorts of uh, protests and uh, demonstration in support of well, not really supporting a hammer, but, but the Palestinians actually condemning the uh, you know uh, the attack that uh, is being meted on them by uh, Israel as response uh, to Collins, what the Hamas did. Yes. Collins, this is where we have to leave it. Time has not been very, very kind to a very engaging session I'm having with you. I really want to say thank you uh, for piping in yourself all the way from Brussels and that uh, our time flies. That unlike 18 years ago when you literally had to fly into London you are just doing this virtually. Pleasure having you. But it's great. And uh, let's do this again as soon as we can. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. We'll go for a short break and we'll be back with the second segment.